Great. Now that we've written a method using this preset method from Unicorn, I thought it would be fun to actually set the method up and run it to see what it looks like. To start this method, the first thing you'll have to do is to prime the pumps and execute the pump wash instructions. You're going to want to see my previous video for how to do that. Next, you'll need to attach the column. There are several proper ways to do this, but I think this is the easiest. In Unicorn, we'll go to the manual execution of instructions, and we're going to turn on the flow rate to one mil a minute using the pumps and pressures radio button. One mil a minute. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the flow path radio button, which is down here. And we're going to select the column position and we're going to go to position one and up flow. This will cause the flow to go uh, from the bottom of the column to the top. I'm going to hit execute. Now I want you to understand, however, that I don't have a column actually attached to the system yet. We're going to do that next. While the column valve is dripping, take the bottom stopper off the column and then plug it into port 1B of the column valve. We're going to tighten the fitting, then loosen it just a tiny bit, like half a twist so it can leak. Then take the top fitting with a stopper in one hand and tighten the um, column from the bottom of the column and unscrew the top of the column really quickly so pressure can't build up. Take the top of the column and put it into position 1A on the column valve. Now we're going to attach the capillary loop. Here I have two 5 mil loops attached end to end to make a single 10 mil loop. Attach one side of the loop into the injection valve labeled loop E and the other labeled loop F. Okay, now in Unicorn, we're gonna bypass the column and bump up the flow rate. So we're gonna go bypass and we'll bump up the flow rate, system flow. We'll go to 10 mils a minute. All right, now we'll go to the injection valve in flow path and we'll select inject. So the idea here is to get all the air out of the loop. Okay, we'll stop the manual run. So next, we'll load the loop with our sample using a syringe. Notice that the syringe has more than 10 mils so that we flush the loop completely with the sample. We'll stop before we push the bubble into the loop as well. Finally, we'll load the fraction collector with tubes. A lot of tubes. I'm doing two racks because we're running this SEC run for the first time, and we don't know how many fractions it's going to take to finish the run. All right, now I hope you're ready to run the method. To do that, we're just going to select the method navigator on the side. You can also hit file and open if you or run if you wanted to. They're a little different, but we'll just hit the method navigator. And we're going to go to our preset method, which is SEC 200 method. And we'll click that. All right, so here is the start protocol for the method that we wrote. This is the variable list. We're going to have to work our way through each of these start protocol, uh, you know, steps. Um, one of the things I talked about was in the last video was, oh, you know, what if we only had a five mil loop on there? 
we might want to change this variable here to you know six mils because you know we just want to save ourselves a little bit of time and you could do that here but for right now we'll just do 12 because that's that's what we have set up we have a 10 mil capillary loop um, for the most part we can just leave everything on here the way it was when we wrote it there's no reason to have to change any of it we'll hit next all right so this is the approximate time it's going to take for us to run the method and the um, total amount of volume that we're going to run through there's some other information here um, you could look at if you wanted to so now we're going to have to select where we want to save the method so i'm going to hit browse and navigate to the folder that I want to save it in. So I have a lot of folders. I'm going to select this training folder and click on examples. Okay, so we're just going to leave the method name as it is. Uh, let's do, yeah. All right, and we'll hit start. Okay, so this window you may not see this but this is part of our column log so this will track how many times we've run this method um, for this particular log we haven't ever tracked anything so there's no reason to keep tracking it now all right since this takes, uh, what did we say it was? 700 minutes, let's go. We can look at the documentation right here to remember how long it'll take. So we'll go here to method information, method duration. It's going to, sorry, it's gonna take 274 minutes. So I'm going to sign out and I will show you what the method look like when it's finished. All right, so this is the result file that we got. Uh, we got two really good peaks. This is the impurity right here, and this is the peak that we're interested in, right? So you'll recall that when we wrote the method, um, let me pull it up here really fast, method editor. I changed this number. Originally it was 0 0.1, right? But then I changed it to 0 0.3. Okay, so it started collecting fractions based on that right here. So, and when you start collecting fractions here, it doesn't care whether it, using like this means of collecting fractions, it doesn't care whether there's a peak there or not. So it started collecting just as soon as the sample started coming off. So I got really lucky starting to collect here. So I would say this is good. This is an excellent method, uh, except that we used a lot of fractions, right? Um, so we collected maybe one, two, three, four, five, six maybe you could say you want b1 maybe you don't um all the rest fractions are are have to go in the trash so that's that's a lot of waste maybe we don't want to do that uh i thought it would be fun now to show you a better way to collect these fractions it'll only take a second so let's go back to the method editor okay so first thing let's do let's fix this mistake down here let's let's do zero point one all right, and now instead of using, we're still gonna use the fraction collector, but instead of using fr fixed fraction volume and just blindly collecting fractions whenever they happen to come off, we are going to use peak fractionation. And when we use peak fractionation, it is going to wait till a certain level and then start collecting um, at that level. And what I mean by level is I mean um, UV absorbance. So let's go over here back to our result file and let's see here, I'm gonna turn on the marker, uh, vertical marker, and let's say I wanna start collecting just a little bit after where A1 collected, like right there. Okay, so there's 21, let's say 25 or 30 milliabsorbance units is where we want to start collecting 
that means that when we finish, right, that it would stop right around um, here, I think. Okay, so it stopped collecting just before B1 started. All right, and we can still do 15 mil fractions. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so back to the method editor, click this. Okay, so how we did this is we selected peak fractionation, but now we have to do the peak fraction settings. So we'll do that. Okay, so I like this, we're gonna select level, all right? And it's level, whenever we do level, it's for absorbance units. You can see that right there, right? And so we're gonna do the start level is gonna be 25 milliabsorbance units, and the end level is going to be 25 milliabsorbance units. And we'll hit OK. All right, and we'll run the method again. And we do this uh, the same way we uh, always did it before. We'll go to the systems control module. We'll hit, oops, we'll go to the method navigator and start our new method. We can see that the peak fraction parameters are in here, right? We'll click that, we'll just click through this really fast, right? And we will call this file um, peak fractionation. start and we're just going to disable this again and hit OK. Okay again I will show you what the result looks like when it's finished in 275 minutes. Okay so here we are uh, the result file for the um, peak fractionation that we collected and you can see that um, it came off like just beautifully. We have, oops, undo zoom. Um, we stopped collecting fractions right here. I just want to add here that we could go back to the method editor and set the peak fractionation parameters to something like 500 and we would collect a peak that's more narrow. And one of the things I did um, was I did go back and I decided that I wanted to collect smaller fractions. So I restarted the method and said that I wanted to collect 10 mil fractions. And the reason was, is because I wanted to try to collect this first peak um, and then this second peak completely separate from each other without a one fraction bridging the gap. And I think that um, A2, I'm gonna turn on the vertical marker here. I think that I did pretty well because like I wanted, I got A1 and A2 in there and then A3 right here um, is the dividing point between this first peak and the second peak. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed um, doing this first run with me. Um, I hope you learned something. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any comments or ideas for tutorial videos, just uh, be sure to say something below. Have a nice day.